Today's video is sponsored by the exciting game War Robots. War Robots is an incredibly fun tactical game where players choose their own giant robots and then they battle each other six on six. War Robots has amazing 3D graphics and the game is constantly being updated with great new content. Download War Robots via the link below the video and you'll not only be supporting this channel but you'll get a massive bonus of GI Patton Robot and a unique skin for it, 4 Punisher machine guns, 100 gold, and 400,000 silver. War Robots has over 70 million downloads and if you weren't one of those 70 million people, you should download it today. Number 3. The Anderson's Christmas Lane and Judith Anderson married in September 1970. The couple had three children and they settled in Carnation, Washington because Wayne got a job at Boeing. Wayne made a good living and the family lived in a house on a large piece of property. Two of their children moved away but their daughter, Michelle, never moved off the property. In the winter of 2007, she was 29 years old and she was living rent free with her boyfriend, 29 year old Joseph McEnroe, in a trailer on the family's property. Shortly before Christmas that year, her parents said that she needed to start paying rent, utilities, and she needed to pay for her own car insurance. This led to several arguments between Michelle and her parents. Michelle had also gotten into an argument with her older brother, Scott. Michelle claimed that Scott owed her money, and Scott disputed that. The parents ended up siding with Scott, and this enraged Michelle and her boyfriend. By Christmas Eve, Wayne and Judith thought that the fighting was over, and they invited everyone over for a Christmas Eve dinner. When Michelle and McEnroe walked over, there was a roast in the oven, and Judith was wrapping presents. Without warning, Michelle pulled out a gun and aimed it at her father. She pulled the trigger, but it jammed. Then McEnroe pulled out a gun and he shot Wayne. McEnroe fixed Michelle's gun and then they both shot Wayne. Judith came running towards the noise and the couple shot her as well. After they were dead, Michelle and McEnroe hid their bodies and cleaned up the blood. Unaware that his parents had been murdered, Michelle's 32-year-old brother Scott arrived for dinner with his 32-year-old wife, Erica, and their two children, Olivia 5 and Nathan 3. Michelle and Macaro both shot Scott and Erica. At this point, Michelle was out of bullets, so Macaro shot both children. After killing most of her family, Michelle fled with Macaro. The bodies were found the next day by a friend of the family. Michelle and Macaro returned to the scene of the crime on the night that the bodies were found, and the police questioned them separately. They originally told the police that they weren't at the house at the time of the murders because they were driving to Las Vegas to elope. But after some pressure, Michelle admitted to killing her family. Michelle said that she wanted the death penalty for the murders, but she wasn't granted that wish. She and Macro were sentenced to six life sentences, meaning they will both die in prison. Number 2. The Ortega's Christmas The Ortega family lived on a quiet cul-de-sac in Covina, California. Every year they threw a Christmas party on Christmas Eve, and Christmas Eve 2008 was no different. That year there was about 25 people in attendance. At 11.30 p.m., the doorbell chimed. Someone opened the door, and standing there was a man dressed as Santa Claus, carrying a present in one of his hands. An eight-year-old girl who was at the party ran towards him. When she did, the man raised his hand that wasn't carrying the gift. He was holding a gun in that hand. He fired a shot, and it hit the girl in the face. The man who was dressed like Santa then started to shoot people at random. He then unwrapped the gift, which was a homemade napalm flamethrower. He torched the house and then fled in his rented car. 
Several people were able to escape and they called 911. When the first responders arrived, the survivors identified the shooter. He was 45-year-old Bruce Pardo. He was the ex-husband of 43-year-old Sylvia Ortega. Pardo and Sylvia got married in January 2006, but it didn't take long before the marriage hit the rocks. Pardo made a good living as an electrical engineer, while Sylvia made a modest living working at a flower breeding company. The financial situation became a problem because Pardo didn't want to financially support two of Sylvia's children from another marriage. The breaking point in their marriage was the fact that Pardo was keeping a secret. He had a son from a previous marriage. His son was a paraplegic because of an accident in a pool that happened when Pardo was watching him. In February 2008, Sylvia said that she wanted a divorce. In the middle of the year-long divorce proceedings, Pardo lost his job. Throughout the autumn, because of his unemployment, he was having problems paying his spousal support payments to Sylvia. The divorce was finalized on December 19th, just six days before the shooting. About four hours after the shooting, the police were called to Pardo's brother's house. Pardo had shot himself in the head. In his rented car that was found a block away, they found more guns and ammunition, and the car was rigged to explode if anyone tampered with it. The police were unable to disarm it, and the car burst into flames. Luckily, no one was hurt. Sadly, the same couldn't be said for the people at the Ortega house. The police confirmed that nine people were killed in the ambush. The victims included Sylvia, both her parents, two of her brothers and their wives, her sister, and her 17-year-old nephew. Luckily, the 8-year-old who was the first person shot survived her injuries. The police know that Pardo had been planning the murders for at least six months. He started planning around the same time that he lost his job. He bought ammunition that could only be purchased outside of California he had $17,000 strapped to his body, and he had a plane ticket on him. They also think that after the massacre, he planned on killing his wife's divorce lawyer, and he was going to flee the city. He dropped off a rental car near the lawyer's house. He just never made it there. The police also know that Pardo planned on killing his own mother. She was supposed to go to the Ortega's party, but she fell ill that night, and at the last minute, she decided not to go. The police think that Pardo killed himself because he received third degree burns during the fire and he knew that he'd have to go to the hospital and he would be arrested. So he chose to take his own life instead of surrendering. Number one, The Simmons Christmas. Ronald Gene Simmons was born in Chicago, Illinois in July 1940. When he was 17, he dropped out of school and he joined the Navy. While stationed in Washington State, he met the woman who would become his wife, Rebecca. They got married in 1960, and over 18 years they had seven children. Simmons eventually left the Navy and he joined the Air Force. As an airman, he served in Vietnam. He retired from the Air Force in 1979, but he struggled with life in his retirement. He couldn't hold down a job, and he bounced from menial job to menial job. In 1981, the family was living in Cloudcroft, New Mexico, but then one day, they quickly picked up and moved. Ronald was being investigated because his 17-year-old daughter, Sheila, had given birth to a daughter named Sylvia, and friends of the family and a teacher of Sheila's thought that Ronald was the father. After moving around, most of the family ended up on a 13-acre hilltop property near Dover, Arkansas. The family lived in two trailer homes that were stitched together. Cement blocks and barbed wire surrounded the home. By the winter of 1987, the three eldest children, Jean, Billy, and Ronald's favorite, Sheila 
had moved out. Just a few days before Christmas, Ronald had his four youngest children dig a cesspit at the back of the trailer. On the morning of December 23rd, the four children boarded the bus to go to school. It was their last day of classes before Christmas vacation started. His eldest son, 29-year-old Gene Simmons, and Gene's three-year-old daughter, Barbara, were visiting and they had spent the night. After seeing his four youngest children off to school, Ronald drove to the local Walmart and purchased a 22 caliber handgun. When Ronald returned home, Gene and Barbara were still in bed, as was Ronald's 46-year-old wife, Rebecca. Using a blunt object, Ronald beat both his wife and his eldest son, and then he shot both of them. He then strangled his three-year-old granddaughter. After killing them, he dragged their bodies into the cesspit that his children had dug a few days earlier. When school was over, his four youngest children returned home. He said he had a Christmas present for each of them, and they were out behind the trailer. He wanted to give them their presents one at a time, so he told them to go wait in their rooms, and he would come get them when it was their time. First, he called out 17-year-old Loretta. He strangled her and drowned her in a rain barrel. He then called out the next child. He killed 14-year-old Eddie, 11-year-old Marianne, and 8-year-old Becky in a method that was similar to the way that he killed Loretta. He tossed their bodies into the cesspit as well. Ronald spent Christmas alone in his home, with more than half of his family decomposing in the cesspit behind the home. On December 26, at around noon, more families started to arrive for a planned Christmas lunch. The first to arrive was 23-year-old Billy, along with his wife, 21-year-old Renata, and their son, 20-month-old Trey. Ronald shot both Billy and Renata after they walked in the door. He then strangled and drowned his grandson. Finally, 24-year-old Sheila arrived with her husband, Dennis McNulty, and her two children, 6-year-old Sylvia, who was both Ronald's daughter and granddaughter, and Michael, who was 21 months old and he was fathered by Dennis. Both Sheila and Dennis were shot dead, and then Sylvia and Michael were strangled. The bodies of the adults were placed side by side in the lounge, not far from the Christmas tree. Ronald placed the bodies of the two toddler boys in the trunk of a car. Sylvia's body was in a bedroom. It is believed her body was there because she tried to run away and hide. Now that his entire family was dead, Ronald started to drink, and that night he went to a bar. Two days after killing the last members of his family, Ronald got into his eldest son's car. He drove to a Walmart and purchased another gun. He then drove to a law firm in the city of Russellville. The receptionist at the office was 24-year-old Kathy Kendrick. Upon entering the office, Ronald shot her in the head. Ronald had worked at a freight company with Kendrick. When they were working together, Ronald became infatuated with Kendrick, but she rejected his advances. He was pressured to quit because his advances had become harassment. After killing Kendrick, Ronald went to a nearby oil company and found a man named Rusty Taylor. Taylor owned the convenience store where Ronald used to work. Ronald had quit because he wanted higher wages and Taylor refused. Ronald shot Taylor in the chest and then shot another man, 33-year-old J.D. Chaffin, who just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Taylor survived, but Chaffin wasn't as lucky, and he died because of his wounds. Ronald then went to the convenience store where he had once worked. He shot both employees who were working, and luckily, they both survived. Next, Ronald went to the freight company where he used to work. Once there, he shot Lane Butts, who was his former supervisor. The bullet struck her in the head and the heart. Ronald then sat and talked to one of the secretaries at the freight company, 
while he waited for the police to come. When the police arrived, he surrendered without resisting. Elaine Butts was rushed to the hospital and she survived. The main question the police had for Ronald was why did he do it? He never gave an explanation, but the police collected some evidence that they thought painted a clear picture as to what the motive was. Sheila, who Ronald had sexually abused for years, had a safety deposit box. In it, there was a threatening letter from Ronald saying he would destroy her life. Also, in the months leading up to the murders, Ronald's wife, Rebecca, had talked about leaving him. Shortly before the massacre, Rebecca wrote a letter to one of her sons saying that she planned on leaving Ronald. Finally, Ronald was angry with Kendrick for rejecting him and he blamed her for a lot of the problems in his life. Ronald was convicted of killing Kendrick and Chaffin and he was sentenced to death in May 1988. After being convicted, Ronald asked to be executed as soon as possible and he refused to appeal. He was executed via lethal injection two years after he was convicted in 1990. No one in his family claimed his body and he was buried in a pauper's grave. During his Christmas killing spree, Ronald Jean Simmons killed 16 people, 14 of which were his own family members and he injured four more. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, please subscribe for more videos just like it. Please don't forget to visit criminallylisted.com where you can suggest cases and buy merchandise. Please also check out our Patreon page where you can get access to an exclusive podcast. But that's all for today. Thanks again for watching.